Play.io's proxy server is not very smart out of the box. When it gets requests, it sends them to the nearest machines at random. Sometimes you need to have opinions about which app or machine gets a request, and the proxy lets you do that with dynamic request routing. To use it, you must put a fly replay HTTP header on the response to a request. Once the proxy receives the response with the fly replay header, it will resend the request according to the header value to another app or machine. You will want to reach for this when you are using a sharded multi-region Postgres setup where some requests need to bounce around to the right cluster. You can reflect any request to the right machine using fly replay. Let's see how to use the fly replay in practice. Imagine you are building a node app and you need to deploy two versions of the app, one supporting the v1 API and the other one supporting the v2. In order to get started, you need to have the following, a fly.io account and flyctl installed. The links are in the description. For this demo, we will use a simple JavaScript Express application exposing an HTTP endpoint, including a version in the URL. When provided with the name in the path, it will return a greeting, including the app version. It could be implemented like this. We've got two routes. One for the high endpoint. It is interpolated with the app version that comes from the environment variable. And the other one, the casual one returning 404. If we start the server with the version set to one, and call the endpoint API hi Tom, we will get 200 response with hi Tom, this is app version v1 in the body. Let's deploy two versions of the app to fly.io. We need a configuration file for each version of the fly app, the fly v1 Tom and fly v2 Tom. The first thing we need to do is to set the names of our apps in these files. I will use fly replay v1, we'll paste it here, ah, sorry, that's v2, and v1 for the v1 version of the app. Next, we need to create this apps at fly.io using the names from the corresponding tom files. Let's jump to the shell and create these files, fryly play v1 and v2. Side note number one, you must use different names from mine when deploying the apps yourself. Side note number two, we are skipping the fly launch step that would generate this fly app config files and docker file for us and reuse the pre-generated ones just to, just to keep things simple. Once we have the fly apps and their config files, we can deploy the apps with fly deploy command providing the respective config files. So I'm going to do that for the uh, first application and then in the other shell I will do the deploy for the other one as you might have already noted we set the version environment variable to v1 and v2 in the fly uh, tom files so here is the environment variable for the first app and for the second app. Our apps are being deployed. Okay, our apps are up and running. Now let's pull up the logs of the first app and send a request to it. Where are the logs? Our app is listening. If we try to call the v1 api on the fly replay v1 app all is good if we try v2 on it we get 404 uh, not found the same can be observed uh, for the fly replay v2 app if it works okay with v2 api path but returns an error on v1 and the logs reflect that and this is what we expected now if you wanted both apps being able to successfully respond to an api call regardless of the version we can leverage the fly replay how is it going to work if a v2 request hits the v1 app 
we will respond with the fly replay HTTP header having the app name set to fly replay v2. So the proxy replays the v2 request to the fly replay v2 app. From the other side, if v1 request hits the v2 app, we accept it and put the fly replay with the app set to fly replay v1. I think that the code changes illustrate the best how this all works. So now we so now we have three routes. The most interesting one is the one the new one in the middle. It catches API calls that didn't match the version our app was set up with. Example, if the version variable is set to v1 and we call the API v2, the new route matches and the fly replay is set accordingly. This works because the route in the middle, the new one, is more specific than the last one, which is the catch-all route. One note here, for the call to be successful, the app value we are setting on the header must exist, otherwise the proxy would report an error and fail. Okay, let's deploy our updated apps and see it in action. So I will deploy the uh, first one and in the other shell the second one. Let's wait for a bit. We are, we are almost up and running. Okay, done. Okay, so let's pull up the logs for the um, first app. And now let's send a request to it. Uh, but provide the v2 API in the path. So we are sending a request to the first app, uh, providing the v2 API, and let's see what happens. The request succeeded, and as we can see, um, the v1 app reports that it's replaying the request for Tom, and now if we pull up the v2 logs, we can see that it actually served that request. Yeah, and that is it. You have just seen the fly replay in action. If you want to experiment on your own, grab the repo with the code I used for the demo and play with it. Remember to set up the app names in the fly tom files uh, and make them different than mine. An interesting next step could be to prevent fly proxy errors if an app we are routing to doesn't exist. There are a couple solutions to this problem. One approach could be to query a DNS by the app name to check if it exists. If you are interested in it, see our guide on the fly fly.io.internal DNS domain. You can find the link in the description as well. I hope this helped you learn more about the platform and the cool hacks you can pull up on it. If you have any questions or want me to cover anything else in the future, please leave a comment in the box down below. If you have created something cool with Fly Replay, also leave a comment or shout us out on Twitter at fly.io. Happy rerouting!